They, they're guys who are shades of grey. They're guys who are just pure evil. There are people who are just pure evil, and those pure evil archetypes are needed in these kinds of stories. The production is money. The production is money. As I was watching this, I was like, bro, this is going to be better than Lord of the Rings. Yo, it's been a while. It's been a minute, bro. I've just been super busy, man. I've been super busy, so I'm sorry that I've not really been posting so much, but hopefully I'll be back trying to post. And I think that, you know, this is it's, it's a good way to return to post some content here, which is um, House of the Dragon, man. All right, so let's deal with the um, poor, poor porcupine in the room. Game of Thrones started well. It still has some of the most incredible episodes in terms of fans I've ever seen in my life, you know, surpassing the Lord of the Rings. But it is the worst decline of an amazing show I've ever seen before. Like, it is so bad that if someone said, oh, should I watch Game of Thrones? No. Watch episodes. Watch Battle of the Beat Arts. And watch The Red Wedding. Watch when your boy Jon Snow faces, like, the White Walkers, like, where they meet him inside this kind of, like, room place. Watch some episodes, but do not watch the whole thing because... The story starts well, and but it ends horribly, bro. It ends absolutely horribly. So, my thing is, um, it, it, it's, it's going to be very hard to win pe people over with this, you know. But look, man, it's it's an interesting story that, they, that they're telling here. And that's why I actually need to ask some questions because I'm a bit confused. So, okay, okay let me ask the questions afterwards. Good start. Good you know, um, no real complaints because it's very hard to give an assessment after just one episode, you know, because you have to just say, okay, you know, you just like Game of Thrones. Yeah, you can start well, but if you don't stick the landing, then the beginning means nothing. So, so far, so good. You know, the everyone is acting very well. Um, so I think the the guy who's taken over the throne, I, can't, I don't know the characters' names, but I know the actors. So your boy, Paddy Considine. I just remember when the guy started out. So he began starting out as like playing this tough, rough, you know, characters and so forth. So you can just see how he's maybe matured, grown older, as now playing a bit more different roles, maybe against type. So and he's solid, you know. Um, with regards to he's not really the kind of leader type. You can see that um he's not really as assertive as you really probably need to be. So you, you so you just know that he's gonna get taken out. And who does he get taken out by? That's just what happens. Matt Smith. The thing with Matt Smith is, like, I've never actually seen him in a film. Because I didn't watch his Doctor Who series. I definitely didn't watch that freaking um, Morbius film. So I've never seen him. But seeing pictures of him, I'm like, bro, this guy can't play a good character. So, I'm sorry, he's just... He is... He has a face of a villain. I mean, people say he's blessed for his cost. I think it's a blessing because his face works supremely well for a villain. And I think when you just look at... And that's the thing. You, you may have the face, but you need the acting chops. So, visually, he works well. I mean, just, just looking at him visually in this setting, already, without him even saying anything, you're like, oh, God, there's, there's something up in this dude. And he's a very good actor. You can see just his acting quality is top-notch. So, the acting with the look, it is superb, amazing casting. And already, you can already see this is a big quality character. And I was watching a review. The guy said that, you know, he doesn't want the guy to be too evil, you know, because it's too on the nose. He wanted to be much, a bit more varied. I love archetypes. You see, I love actors because that's why I, they, they're guys who are shades of grey. They're guys who are just pure evil. There are people who are just pure evil and those pure evil archetypes are needed in these kinds of stories. And I think that I want to see a dude like in this um, Daemon guy, Daemon Targaryen, where he's just evil. So, because already I'm thinking this guy is going to be a real, a real problem. He's going to be a real problem. Freaking Joffrey. They think Joffrey was, oh, well, Joffrey has a shade of grey. Joffrey had no shades of grey. He was pure evil. Like, don't give me anything of like, well, there's the other side. Joffrey was a pure evil piece of crap. So was freaking Cersei. So, yeah, they were all evil. Um, so, and also, I mean, I think it's Emma Darcy who's like the um, girl queen who obviously takes over the, the throne. She's called, like, I have no qualms with any of the acting. You know, even the guy, I think it's something to saw. So, you know, here's the thing. No, look. So, look, here's the thing. I'll just come out and say this. I have a rule of thumb. Minimum of two blacks. That's my rule of Minimum of two, two blacks. Because if you just have one black guy, it sticks out like a sore thumb because you're like, oh, lose this black guy here. But if you have two blacks, okay, then okay, you have something here. But one black, it's too obvious. So my thing is this is that, look, 
I just don't hope they haven't because I don't know whether the books say. I just hope, just hope this casting isn't about okay, man. Let's just try and show that we're diverse because I hope this casting isn't about oh, they criticize us for being too white, you know, in the Game of Thrones. So let's just show a bit of our diversity. Don't give me that crap. Don't if you want to be diverse, then put two, at least minimum of two blacks. Just don't put one black guy to stand out. But that being said, he's good. He's good. I think it's something something to some. He's a good actor, good character. Like everyone is good. I think it's Rhys Ifans or Rhys Ifans, the Welsh guy. I think I think he's Welsh who plays the um, Hound of the King. He's good as well. Everybody's good, and I think everything is set to be all right. These guys are are all going to be going for one one another. And I think what is interesting is, bro, how are you going to deal with this DM, Damon dude? Because this guy just looks like a loose cannon. And he's a loose cannon. He's obviously a very good fighter. So you're like, what? So I'm saying that, what is the antithesis to him? You know, what is the antithesis to him? Because I just know for a fact he's going to he's gonna clap his his brother, take over the, the, the throne, and maybe there's not going to be a situation where maybe the, the lead girl character and the others are going to go, look, we have to figure out a way of getting this dude out. So I like that because he's a, I like stories where there's a problem here. There's a serious problem here. And how do you deal with this freaking problem? Because bro, where's so like This guy was, this guy probably castrated the dude, chopping off guys' limbs. It's crazy. So I just had a few questions from you guys. Maybe you guys know more about this. So they said this is 170 years before, um, Daenerys is born. And why do they have to like hundreds of years? Daenerys. I don't care about Daenerys. Don't make her like a freaking big deal. How many years is this before the Mad King? That's what I want to know. And how many years removed is Daenerys from it? So who is Daenerys related to amongst this? So who is like her great, 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 great grandfather amongst these Targaryens that are there? So that's what I want to know. So if you could just tell me like who Daenerys is related to. And how many years removed is this from the Mad King and like the events of Game of Well so obviously well so this is um hundred years before the Game of Thrones. So I suppose this is like what a hundred and something years because is is the Mad King like Daenerys' great grandfather? I just just please someone in the comments just give me a little bit of detail as to where is where. But look, see, and also as well, what I always like about these shows, even as crap as the last episode, last season was Game of Thrones, the production is money. The production is money. I know looking at this, I'm like, man, this is just extremely well made. This is extremely well made. I mean, I love the armor, I love the costumes. They've improved the CG on the dragons. The CG on the dragons in the early seasons of Game of Thrones was garbage. But they didn't have enough money. So, like, yeah, look, this stuff is good. And you know, as I was watching it, I was like, bro, because the Lord of the Rings series starts, I think, September 2nd. So I think next Friday. As I was watching this, I was like, bro. This is going to be better than Lord of the Rings. And I believe that Lord of the Rings, I think they said that is the most expensive TV show ever made. The Amazon's Lord of the Rings. But my thing is that it doesn't matter about how much money you spend. It's about the quality. And I don't think the Lord of the Rings will have the acting quality or just the general. It's, it's directing. Because I remember the guy's name. I think it's Miguel Sapochuk. I think he's the guy that did um, Battle of the, of the Beat Hearts. Um, and I think he's the guy that does, has done most of the best episodes of Game of Thrones was the guy who did this opening episode. So if they get those same directors from Game of Thrones, bro, House of Dragon will easily, easily be better than The Lord of the Rings. Because that Lord of the Rings thing, it looks expensive, but I just have a bad feeling about that whole thing, man. But look, man, looks good. Looks good. I'm just basically, I'm just looking forward to see what this Daemon guy does and how all the Targaryens around are going to react to your boy and everything. And... Bro, that's what you call just like bad. That's what you call a jinx or bad luck. So you say that, okay, kill my wife because I need to save my son. You get a son, but your wife dies and your son dies. I mean, that is just bad. But you know what it was? It's, it's, it's how fate happens. You are hiding from it. You're going to take your puts your daughter on the throne. So yeah, guys, tell me what you think down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll be back next week for another episode. Hopefully, I'll be posting more content back up with this piece. One love.